Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Albums You Have to Buy. Um, you're gonna see through this series that my music taste, um, isn't as wide as others act like theirs are. Um, I'm just gonna get out of the way right now. I'm more into punk rock and, uh, classic rock. So, and really the punk rock is older punk rock, like 70s and 80s. I'm not too into newer punk rock. But you will see some variation on that, uh, so feel free to drop in for a couple of albums that you like or think you'll like, but just stay away if you're into, into really anything outside of that. Um, or you could always stay and learn about some new genres that you may just find that you like. Uh, so, by now you've probably noticed the image is a little album by They Might Be Giants called Flood. Now, this doesn't fall into either of those categories, and uh, that is for a reason, since this is the first episode I want it to be outside of that so that you can see kind of where I branch off to. It's not super far, but you get my drift. So, without further ado, let's jump into They Might Be Giants Flood, what I consider to be one of the best albums, period, ever released, and I'll begin explaining why. Uh, first of all, um, okay, I, I'm going to go through this just track by track. Um, I, yeah, just for this episode, I'm going to go through track by track. So... <coughs> Sorry, I still have a... Whoa. Okay, I still have a lingering amount of my cold. So, after this two-minute intro, we finally get into this. Okay, so, why do you have to buy this album? One, um, it's a funny album. Now, it's not like a dang cut comedy CD uh, where you're going to be sitting there laughing the entire time. But it's just um, humorous, witty lyrics that are also pretty deep and pretty ambiguous and open to interpretation. And they might be giants outside of a couple that I'll mention as we go. Um, they really don't confirm a meaning behind the songs because some of them are just nonsensical and it, and it's just a really fun album. And this is definitely their best, their, their most well-known album. Um, whether or not it's their best is up for a little bit of debate, but most people will side with this in a debate between it and other They Might Be Giants albums. So it starts with a little 27 second diddly called Theme from Flood, which is basically a 27 second song praising themselves. <laughs> um, it's basically a chorus saying why it's so great that they have a new album out. So it's a great way to start any album. And and this was just their second album, so it's not even like they had this right, like built up fan base like the Rolling Stones or Aerosmith or or U two or someone who's like been around forever and they can do that. It's just yeah, so it's it's great. Uh, the second song on the album is Birdhouse in Your Soul, and if you haven't heard the album in in its entirety, which I suggest you do for every album that's going to be on here, but. If you haven't listened to the album in its entirety, or even ever heard of They Might Be Giants, this is probably one of the songs of theirs that you might have heard. Um, I'm not going to play it here, it's available all over YouTube if you just type in Birdhouse in Your Soul, They Might Be Giants, or really if you just type in Birdhouse in Your Soul. It's uh, one of... I'm not going to say how many because I'm not sure yet. It's one of the singles off of this album. And it was actually a pretty successful song, and it is referenced in pop culture quite a bit. And it, it's just a great song. I really like it. Um, okay, Lucky Ball and Chain. This is about a guy whose girlfriend breaks up with him, and um, it, the way that it's structured and everything is just great. And, and it's another just fun song, which all of these are. Okay, the fourth track on this list is Istanbul, not Constantinople. Now, there has been a little bit of confusion about this with people um, with whom I speak on the subject of this. This is not a They Might Be Giants song. 
I mean, it's on Flood, and their version of it is the best-known version. But it was actually originally a... It it still is here, just with a little bit of an Indian feel. But um, it was originally a swing-style song. Um, I'm reading this off of Wikipedia. With lyrics by Jimmy Kennedy and music by Nat Simon. And it was written by... Or... It doesn't say... Oh... It was originally recorded by the Canadian group The Four Lads on August 12th, 1953. And the reason I mention that is because, um, uh, like I'll do with all of these, is whenever there's a cover, I want to point out, point out what the original artist was, um, and just clear up any confusion about that, or maybe settle a debate that you may have been having with a friend or a loved one. Um, I, this didn't really turn into a, a debate, it was just me looking it up because I was interested in it. But my dad commented, um, during a show, uh, they were playing Istanbul, not Constantinople. And it was, it was supposed to be set in the late 50s, early 60s. He was like, oh yeah, because they might be giants were out then. And I was like, hmm, well that's kind of a weird, I mean, that's not like a mainstream song. I mean, it was a, it was a successful single, but it's not like it's a super mainstream song. So why would they insert that as kind of a nod to them instead of putting on an obvious song like putting on the Ritz or something? Um, and that's why, because it was released then, and it was a popular song then. So, learn something new every day. Number five is probably my f personal favorite song on here. Well, no. It's one of my per This whole album is just so great, I can't really pick a favorite. But this is the one that I would have played at my funeral, the appropriately titled Dead. And it's about a guy who procrastinates his entire life. And the chorus basically goes, um, I'm either dead, or I'm either dead and I, uh, haven't done anything that I want, or I'm still alive and there's nothing I want to do. So it's about procrastination, basically. Um, and then number six, Your Racist Friend, is another really, really good song. Um, it's, it's, it's well written, it's interesting, it's catchy, it's fun, and, and it, it's really, really, really weird and open to interpretation. Instead of really saying what the racist friend said, or how the friend is even racist in the first place, or who he's even talking to, um, just kind of is him complaining about this girlfriend of his, is how I would imagine it, but maybe just somebody else. Whoever, um, a friend of theirs who's racist, he, at a party, and he complains about it for about three minutes in that song. Okay, this is another one that a lot of people will have heard of. Number seven is Particle Man. Um, and it it's just a nonsense... You just have to listen to the song. Because it, it's, it's, all of these are really good, and I'm going to stop saying that because it's kind of getting annoying now. Number eight is Twisting. Um, now, after Particle Man, back when I was kind of early into my music listening career, I guess you could call it, um, I wouldn't really listen to whole albums, and this is the first album that I really started listening to as a full album, but I would only listen to the first seven songs. So recently, when I, um, decided to go back to this after a long hiatus that was far too long, and that hiatus was only, uh, uh, a, well, okay, it wasn't really recently, it was a couple years ago, and I came back to it after, like, a two or three month hiatus, wherein I was discovering some more musical tastes that I had, and Twisting, I heard for the first time, and it really hooked me. And I was like, wow, maybe the rest of this album is something worth listening to. And my little self um, kind of needs to learn how to listen to good music. Number nine is We Wanna Rock. This is another one of the more popular songs from this album. That if you hear it, you'll probably recognize it. Uh, and, and it's another, um, really random thing, but I think it has to do with fads. There are some people who say that it relates to more serious things, like the Ku Klux Klan. Again, all of them are open to interpretation, and it's a great song. 